Good evening, boys and girls. Are you ready for bed? Are you all tucked up, ready for another Lights Out Bedtime story? Well, tonight's story is still down that lane in memory land with Storyteller Part 5. And tonight's story is called Drummer Boy and the Gypsy by George Layton. Once upon a time, late one evening, Drummer Boy was on his way to a new home. Tom and Madge Summers had just bought him for their riding stables at Applegate. The horse box began to sway dangerously, and Tom had to stop at the side of the road. When he opened the back of the box to calm the pony, Drummer Boy suddenly leapt down and thundered away into the dark. Madge wanted to go after him, but Tom said, We'll never catch him now. We'll come back tomorrow. And they drove off, leaving the pony alone in the night. At first, Drummer Boy thought only of getting away from the horse box, and he thundered noisily along the hard road. Then he slowed to a trot. He felt lost and frightened, and he missed his warm stable. Sheltering beside a hedge, he fell asleep. He was still standing there when Billy Smith came by on his way to school the next morning. Billy was a gypsy boy with black curly hair and sparkling black eyes. If there was one thing he loved, it was horses. His father didn't keep them any more, but Billy was like the old type of gypsies with horses in his blood. Whoa there, fella, he whispered, stroking Drummer Boy. We're going to be friends. The pony felt that he would be safe with the boy, but how cold he was. Poor boy, said Billy. We'd better get you home to Grandma. And he walked back home with Drummer Boy following. The gypsy camp was in a field just up the main road, full of shabby cars and lorries. But one painted wooden caravan stood out like a bright flower. Billy went to the door and knocked. His grandmother opened it. What have you got here? she asked, peering at the pony. I found him up a Lupton Road. He's very cold, and I thought you might be able to help him. She went back inside the caravan and returned with a bottle of evil-smelling medicine. It's my own special recipe. She poured some down the pony's throat, and it warmed Drummer Boy like liquid fire. Then she bedded him down on a pile of sacks covered with old blankets. He'll be as good as new in no time, said the old gypsy. Billy settled down to stay with Drummer Boy until he had recovered. He was still sitting there, stroking the horse, when his father appeared. "'What's that horse doing here?' he shouted. "'Get the animal away from here. Horse stealing's a crime, you know.' "'But I didn't steal him. I found him.' "'In that case, you'd better take him to the police station in Lupton. "'They'll know what to do with it until the owner turns up.' "'Perhaps... If nobody claims him, the police will let me keep him. You can put that idea right out of your head, snapped his father. There's no room for here for horses. And he stamped off. Billy, called his grandmother from her caravan door. Come here, I've got something to show you. From an old carved chest, she took out a parcel and slowly unwrapped the most beautiful bridle Billy had ever seen. It belonged to your great-grandfather, my father, she said. He had forty horses, and this was made for his favourite. Now you look after it, do you hear? Treat it well, and it'll bring you luck. Billy could hardly find the words to thank her. He went outside and put the bridle over Drummer Boy's head. There, it fits perfect. 
Then he sighed. But by this afternoon I won't have you any more. Drummer Boy knew it was time to go. He got to his feet, and Billy mounted him, and he cantered out of the camp, with Gypsy Boy on his back. Drummer Boy was content to go anywhere. A path cut across the fields of purple heather towards Lockton and the police station. Drummer Boy began to enjoy himself, and he raced over the ground, and Billy seemed as light as a feather on his back. They galloped uphill towards the low stone wall. How Drummer Boy loved to jump. He shortened his stride and prepared to leap the wall. Up and over, cried Billy. But on the other side of the wall lay nothing but the steep sides of a flooded quarry and Drummer Boy was gripping by fear. The ground gave way and under his feet as he landed and he began to slide down towards the water. Billy left off. But Drummer Boy hit the muddy water with a huge splash. He'll drown for certain, thought Billy. The water's so deep. But Drummer Boy struggled to the ledge by the side of the pool. Billy slithered across and crawled down the side of the quarry until he was near enough to catch Drummer Boy's bridle. Easy boy, easy boy, he whispered. Keep still now. It'll be all right. Help will come. But Billy was wrong. Help did not come for hours and hours. He sat there with the pony's head in his arms, and Billy shouted and shouted until he lost his voice. But no one heard his cries for help. The light began to fade as evening came. Suddenly, overhead, he heard a dog bark, and then he saw a large black Labrador at the top of the quarry. And Billy cried, Fetch him, master! Fetch him, boy! Fetch him! The dog ran off, and in a few minutes was back with its owner. We'll have you out today in no time, lad, shouted the man, peering down at the boy and his horse. Don't worry! And in half an hour, a rescue helicopter was hovering above. First, one of the crew was lowered with a special sling. Then Billy helped him fit around the drummer boy. The astonished pony could not understand what was happening. He tried to keep his eyes fixed on his young friend. Would they leave Billy down there and take only him? Up and up he went until he was lowered again, well away from the quarry. Billy did not wait for help from the helicopter. He quickly climbed out to make sure Drummer Boy was safe. After that, there were cups of cocoa and biscuits for Billy, and a delicious bran mash for Drummer Boy. They were both taken to the home of the dog's owner. The police, Billy's dad, and Tom and Madge Summers all called there to see the boy. I was taking him to the police station when we fell into the quarry, Billy told them. He's called Drummer Boy, said Madge, and you can come and see him whenever you like. So Billy spent every weekend and school holiday working at Applegate Stables. A lot of children rode Drummer Boy, but he only wore the gypsy bridle when Billy was on him. And that was not the last time that he brought them an adventure. The End <laughs>